Acava, Spain's affordable alternative to champagne. Today I'll be going over a grape grown in South Africa, and that grape is Pinotage. So why am I doing these videos? Well, the majority of you have probably heard of some varietals like Cabernet Sauvignon, Pinot Noir, Chardonnay, Riesling, Moscato. I, however, would like to introduce you to some grapes that you probably never even heard of. So at the beginning of each video, I will remind you of a few things. First and foremost, anyone can learn how to smell and taste wine. Your sensations of taste and smell are determined by the chemicals that are in food. So when we say we're smelling boysenberries or we're tasting cream, we're not making this up. With time, you can train yourself to seek out individual smells. Just swirl your wine glass, close your eyes, and think about the individual fruits or wood or flowers or minerals that you're smelling or tasting. And of course, this will help you appreciate wine. I'll keep bringing back uh, to your attention several terms that I will define at the beginning of each video. So obviously you already know whether or not a wine is dry or sweet. Body is the mouthfeel you have when you taste wine. It is analogous to milk. If it feels like whole milk, that's a full bodied wine. If it's like skim milk, it's light bodied. If it's 2%, it's medium bodied. Uh, you can also guess the body by the tiers or legs that form on the glass after you swirl it. If the tiers take a long while to form, it's a full-bodied warm wine. Wow. <laughs> if uh, they come and go quickly, it's a light-bodied wine. Tannin is the astringency you feel in your mouth that some wines have. It makes your tongue feel like it's sticking to the side of your teeth or to the roof of your mouth. If a wine is too tannic, you might make this face. Acidity is how watery your mouth feels after swallowing. The more watery, the higher the acidity. All wines are acidic because they have a lower pH level than water, which is something you probably went over in middle school or high school chemistry. Alcohol, outside of the label, can also be guessed by how much the wine burns at the top of your throat when it goes down. You can also guess how much alcohol is in the wine by how far away you can hold the glass before you can smell the wine. The further away, the higher the alcohol. For example, you can smell a Zinfandel from further away than a Moscato. Okay, so now on to the grape. Pinotage is made in the coastal region of South Africa, which is the southwest part of the country. So, South Africa, as you can tell, there's a little South Africa map here, a broader picture of the wine region, and then this area right here, this purple area, is the coastal region. Now this grape was invented or created, if you will, in 1925 by Abraham Perel when he crossed Pinot Noir in Sinsu, a grape associated with Provence region of France. However, in South Africa, it was known as Hermitage. So hence came the term Pinotage. The reasoning behind this combination was that Pinot Noir was too hard of a grape to grow in South Africa, and Sinsu was a very productive grape. So what was supposed to essentially be an alternative to Pinot Noir turned into a grape nothing like its parents. It is high in tannin and incredibly bold. Now, what good would a grape be without a fun backstory? So Peril planted four seeds from uh, across in the garden around that area of his official residence in Well Gavilan uh, Experimental Farm, and then apparently forgot about them. So in 1927, he left the university to take up a different job, and the garden became overgrown. The university sent in a team to tidy up. 
just as Charlie Niehaus happened to pass by. Now, Niehaus was a young lecturer who knew about the seedlings that had been planting. And what he did was he rescued them from the cleanup team. It's as though Harold was the embodiment of the absent-minded professor. Unfortunately, Pinotage was not initially a good quality grape due to how easy it was to produce in mass quantities. Recently, several vineyards devoted time and effort to make this grape what it is today, a quality wine that is worth your time. So what can you expect from Pinotage? Well, it's a full-bodied red wine. It is very dry and has a medium-high amount of tannin. Pinotage is not all that acidic and has a high amount of alcohol. The wine is meant to be drunk in a red wine glass, if you have one, and served between 60 to 68 degrees, known as room temperature. Should you have the patience, Pinotage can be stored anywhere from 5 to 15 years. You can spend around $15 for a good bottle of Pinotage wine, which is very affordable. So what are some of the smells and tastes you can expect from Pinotage? Black cherry, blackberry, fig, menthol, and roasted meat. Which, awesome that you can actually pick up on something like that, but it can be done. Pair it with roasted meat and vegetables topped with teriyaki or barbecue sauce for a fun experience. So if you're already a fan of Syrah, you might want to give this red wine from South Africa a try. Anyway, this is Mark, your Madison Cork Dork. Join me tomorrow at 3 o'clock when I will talk about what the impact of the coronavirus might be on the wine industry. And personally, I think there might be some fun things coming about in, unfortunately, this uh, not very good circumstance. And anyway, thank you for watching. Enjoy the rest of your day.